The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Good morning and welcome to our third Sunday of the Pentecost. We are returning to our church buildings last week at Hallerook and Broadford, and today we are at Kilmore. Most of our procedures and protocols are now in place. We will still be doing services online, and I pray that this process will continue so for us to reach out to all of our parishioners that cannot meet at this time. God bless our time together. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 1. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that Jesus as Christ so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death, like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our own old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew the 10th chapter, and I'm beginning to read from the 24th verse. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. But I say to you, in the dark, tell in the light. And what you have, what you have heard whispered, Proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both the soul and body in hell. Honor two sparrows sold for a penny. Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come 
to bring peace to earth. I have come to bring peace. I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And no one's foe will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their lives will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. And so let us pray. God of grace, God of peace and God of eternal life, hear our prayer as we pray to help us to discover your presence in us and to make your presence known to all we meet and encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. We are easing our restrictions in, in Australia. We are in a very fortunate position. People I spoke to say we live in a lucky country. Yet the world at large shows a different picture. USA and Brazil's numbers are growing and their deaths are skyrocketing. China is showing a second wave and there are protests and violence across the world. Everything seems to be chaotic. Everything is uncertain. Death is everywhere. Just bad news all over. Even China and India are at war. These events fill us with despair and anxiety. It fills us with fear for our own safety and for those of our loved ones. So what is the opposite of fear? Is it courage? Is it to be brave? No, it's not. The opposite of fear is love. God is love and throughout scripture we are told not to fear but only to believe. Stevie Wonder wrote the song, Love is in need of love today, way back in 1976. And it says, Good morn or evening, friends. Here's your friendly announcer. I have serious news to pass on to everybody. What I am about to say could mean the world's disaster could change your joy and laughter to tears and pain. It's that love is in need of love today. Don't delay. Send yours in right away. Fear's going round. Hate's going round, breaking many hearts. Stop it, please, before it's gone too far. The force of evil's plans to make you its possession. And it will, if we let it destroy everybody. We all must make, take precautionary measures. If love and please your treasure, then you will hear me when I say, Oh, what love's in need of love today. Love's in need of love today. Don't delay. Send yours in right away. Fear, yes, hate's going round, breaking many hearts. Stop it, please, before it's gone too far. Fear awakens the worst in us. It awakens anger. Fear awakens evil within us. It awakens our need for self-preservation for our own survival. Fears awakens hate 
for we prepare to fight. We must defend ourselves at all costs and then destroy what brings fear to us, that which threatens our very lives. St. Paul reminds you and I in his letter to the Romans that Christ gave his life for us on the cross. Therefore, we need to be living for God in Jesus Christ. Living for God means living in love, doing what is good. Our lives are assured. Living with kindness, loving in trying to understand, living with compassion, seeing God in everyone and everything. In the Gospel reading this morning, Jesus says, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Living for God is finding our life. Living with compassion helps us to find our life. It gives purpose to our life. It makes life worthwhile. These past weeks, we have seen protests across the world. A demand for dignity and the, uh, the recognition that lives matter. There is new normal. There is no, there's no normal, for we cannot go back to what was. Our lives are going to be different. We will have to engage in a new way with each other. There is no square or proverbial box. Nothing, nothing is really, nothing to really go back to. We need to find a new normal, a new way of being with one another, listening to each other, hearing one another, re reassuring each other and caring for one another. This will and must be the new way, God's way. St. Paul reminds us that none of us live for ourselves and none of us dies to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord and if we die, we die to the Lord. And so then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Indeed, love is in need of love today. Don't delay. Send yours in right away. Love's in need of love. Did you ever think that love would be in need of love today? So don't delay. Send yours in right away. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We pray the collect of the day. Gracious God, we who were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. We pray that, as you raised him from death, so by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may live the new life to your glory, knowing ourselves to be dead in sin, but alive to you in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the world and the church. Loving God and merciful God, you care for your people and all your children are precious in your sight. We pray for all the families of nations. We pray for all whose lives are torn apart by natural disasters and war. Those torn out by the those worn out by the COVID nineteen pandemic. 
disease and famine. We pray for peace and, and goodwill among nations, especially in the Middle East, and for a just sharing of the earth's resources, that we may live as brothers and sisters, children of the same God. Loving God, help us daily to grow into your likeness and in your mercy hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, you offer your people redemption and fullness of life. We pray for your holy Catholic Church, for all baptized in Christ. We pray for the churches of Australia, for leaders, teachers and theologians, for Philip our Archbishop and Clarence our Bishop, for the clergy and people of this parish. We pray for charity and unity among all Christians that together we may proclaim your gospel of love. Loving God, help us daily to grow into your likeness, and in your mercy hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, you are good and forgiving, and you abound in steadfast love for your people. We pray for our community, we pray for our families, our neighbours and our friends, for all whom we meet in, your day, in our daily lives, for the hungry, the homeless, and all without work. We pray for our, our community, a community that values and cares for all its members, that all may live in dignity and hope. Loving God, help us daily to grow into your likeness, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, you are filled with compassion for your people, and in our troubles you hear our cries. We pray for all in need. We pray for all who are lonely or sad, for those in grief or despair for the sick and the dying, for all who care for them. We pray especially for Kathy Slade, Belinda Shannon, Sharon De Batista, Barry Watts, Ray Daly, Val Watts, Shirley Perkins, Ferris Hamlin, Joyce Bennett, Gwen Bouchon, Anne Foote, David Chilcott, Ella Burt, Debbie Mayer and her family, Candace Pierce and Beryl Kirby, we pray for courage in our troubles and compassion and generosity that we may respond to the needs of others. Loving God, help us daily to grow into your likeness and in your mercy hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, you deliver your people from death and promise us the joys of everlasting life. We pray for all who have died in your love. We pray for those whose anniversary of death we remember this week. Charles Ho, Alex Gibson, Harold Smith, John Batman, Raymond Evans, Helen Schill, Lorraine Tyrrell, Arthur Winnell, Tom Madigan, Norman Hughes, Sadie Winnell, Stuart Ratford. Press eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Help us to love you above all else, that united with all your saints, we may be raised to a joyful resurrection and live with you forever. Loving God, help us daily to grow into your likeness and in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Amen. Let us pray for the blessing of Australia. God bless Australia, guard our people, guide our leaders, and give us peace.
for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love and remember. Amen. To be blessed, be safe, be kind, be at peace.